couple of weeks ago, uh, Helen and I went to the uh, local theatre, the Cliffs Pavilion, uh, which turns out to be much, much better than we ever thought it would be. All sorts of uh, headline acts playing there. Uh, and we went to see Paul Merton, who is uh, of Have I Got News For You fame uh, and, and uh, known elsewhere as well, I'm sure. And he was doing an, an improvisational comedy sketch with a number of uh, his friends, a number of regulars on the comedy circuit. Part of the act was that in the interval, people could come forward and write something down on a, on a piece of paper, stick it in a, in a hat. And then in the second half, they'd have to pull it out, read it out, and whatever it was, they'd get up and they'd do a sketch about it and, and make a joke. And because it was a couple of weeks ago, uh, one of the things that they pulled out was uh, the, the, the baptism of Prince George. And so Paul Merton pulls this out, and another chap runs onto the stage, obviously pretending to be Prince William. Uh, and he says, oh, oh, Vicar, lovely lovely to see you. Excellent to be here today. Uh, fantastic. Uh, we're really looking forward to, to the baptism or, or the christening or the, uh, the baptism christening. Um, Vicar, what, what, is, what is the difference anyway between the two of them? And Paul Merton, obviously stalling for time, says, uh, oh, yes, yeah, I'm, I, am, I, am the, I am the vicar here. And obviously, um, obviously I do know the difference between uh, uh, baptism and christening. Uh, baptism and a christening, uh, baptism, baptism, the water's warmer. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I've had a, have a word with our, our sides people today, and we're definitely doing a baptism. So uh, that, should, that should cut down on any uh, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh, uh, if you if you yourself do know do know the difference between a baptism and christening, you can award yourself uh, five points. Well done. I thought that was uh, very very appropriate that, um, that 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 popped up when I knew that I would be preaching here, uh, and also appropriate is uh, this day. It might seem uh, to strike us as a little strange to begin with that today, when we celebrate All Saints, uh, we also baptize. All Saints is. Uh, the day when we celebrate all those saints who have gone before us who uh, have attained the beatific vision in heaven. Uh, the beatific vision is uh, the image of, of holy bliss, uh, that, that communion with, with Christ and with God that we can only obtain uh, when we are directly in his presence, uh, not something we can obtain in this mediated life, but what the angelic hosts and the saints who have gone before us uh, now enjoy in the heavenly realm. And one might think, well, what's that uh, got to do with, with baptism? Uh, well, an awful lot, I hope, is the answer, uh, and I hope you'll agree with me uh, by the end. It's, uh, it's the idea that, that John writes about in his first letter when he says, uh, we shall see him as he is, uh, without the, the veil that we now look through, uh, a direct image of God imprinted upon us uh, and it will be uh, a, a most wonderful experience, an experience that we can only palely have access to at the moment. And when we celebrate All Saints Day we also celebrate the fact uh, and acknowledge the fact that there is a, a mystical union in which we Christian saints alive today are joined with those saints who have gone before us and even those saints who are yet to come. We're joined with them primarily through the sacrament of baptism. It's baptism through which Christ calls every one of us by name and he marks us as his own. A sacrament is a, a, a material thing which points beyond itself and to our creator, God. And baptism is a sacrament because through it we're united with God by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And we're able to access that pale reflection of the vision which the saints in heaven enjoy. For all of the value of our, our words and our beliefs, central to Christianity is this idea that matter matters. The material is important. And so it's an action, uh, a sensory experience, by which we say we access God. In his letter to the, uh, to the Ephesians, uh, we heard Paul speaking today, outlining what the good news is. The good news for the Christian who has set his life or her life on Christ is that the marking of the Holy Spirit is the seal of our inheritance of redemption. 
And every single time that one more person of God's creation is added to that swelling body of saints, there is rejoicing in heaven. And the angels and all the heavenly hosts, they delight and they sing, Alleluia, praise be to God. And there's thanksgiving and there's jubilation in the highest of heights. And that's our sure and our certain hope. We have that knowledge that our eternal life is guaranteed. But we also live in this strange paradox, in the already and the not yet. We look towards that day when we will take in that beatific vision, but we also know that when we look outside the window, when we walk outside the church today, the world we see is not always altogether beautiful. Not only are we baptised into that glorious victory, and we certainly are, but we're also baptised into a life following Christ. Uh, and that is a path that can be hard, a path that is often shirked by society, a path which we ourselves often shirk. And so we seek to come to know more about Christ, Christ who, as Paul said, is above all things, Christ who is the head of all things, Christ who is our only and our absolute hope, Christ whom God raised from the dead, and in whose glorious resurrection we share as we take part in that bodily dying and rising again from the waters of baptism. The Christ who we come to know week by week as we partake of his body and his blood, those material things that bring us closer to him. But we acknowledge, too, the truth made evident in today's gospel. That attempting to live lives in accordance with God's will is hard. There are Christians around the world today, our brothers and sisters in Christ, who are meeting in secret. There are saints being added to our number today, who, by confessing Christ's name, endanger their very lives. Who does not wish for the people they love to be full, to be rich, to have smiles on their faces? And does any wish this more than a parent upon their child that they love? And yet we know that following Christ calls us to live a certain life that can be sacrificial and that can leave us in the eyes of the world as both poor and hungry. It may strike you as odd that I, that I bring that up as we prepare to celebrate Esme's baptism. Am I souring the tone? By no means. In baptism, we celebrate the working out of our salvation. That is the work that has already been done, and it is wonderful. But we also commit the person to be baptised, and we commit the whole community to a life which responds to that gift that God has given us. When we live out Christ's calling, the world will call us weak and the world will call us worthless. But that is precisely what God exalts. And so we look forward to living lives together as we attempt to fulfill Christ's command, teaching one another and learning from one another how to love our enemies, how to do good to those who hate us, how to bless those who curse us, how to pray for those who abuse us, how when we're struck on the cheek we can offer the other one, how when someone comes asking for our coat we can give them our shirt as well, how when we can lend we can expect nothing in return how we can give to everyone who asks from us. We learn and we teach how we can do to others as we would have them do to us. And many will try and convince you that these words are foolishness. Who can achieve that level of self-discipline? Who can achieve that level of love? 
And of course, they're quite right. In the eyes of the world, these are irrational. They're ridiculous. We cannot accomplish this, but only through the power of God. Today, Christ claims Esme for his own. To be numbered among the saints who have gone before, the saints who now live, and those who are to come. And we pray that with the help of God and her family and friends, and the whole church, that she will journey, just as we all do, seeking towards holiness. Today, she is adopted as a child of God, a fellow heir with Christ Jesus. And so we welcome her as a sister. As may as you are baptized, we welcome you into the communion of saints. We commit our lives to Christ, to prayer, to fellowship and holiness. Certain that it is a task too great for any of us, knowing that before we even start, we will fall short. But we trust in God's deep mercy, the salvation that has been won for us through Christ's life and his death and his resurrection. And we look forward to taking our place alongside all those saints, gazing upon God's holy bliss, bathed in inextinguishable light. Amen.